involved in a QT discussion group, and, and um, you can download the software as well, of course, and grab the latest code from our repository. So please check it out if you're interested. And um, for those of you who are not familiar with the field of engineered quantum devices, I would just like to start by giving some context and uh, describe a little bit what uh, the physical systems that we are studying are. So on, on this slide, I show four examples. To, to the left, you have a superconducting circuit. And next to that, there is a semiconducting quantum device, a na nano, nano microscale device. And next to that, there is a nanomechanical resonator. And then there is an ion trap experiment. And uh, there are also many other kinds of quantum optics experiments that are suitable for, 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 for this toolbox. So all of these devices have one thing in common, and it's that they, in the, in the very low temperature regime, their dynamics is governed by quantum dynamics. And uh, also, there is a finite number or relatively small number of quantum states that are involved in the dynamics of these systems. And research on uh, uh, engineered quantum devices has been a very hot topic of research in the late last decade or so. And with this development, there have been, has been an um, increasing demand for computational toolboxes for studying these kind of systems. And with Qtip, we're trying to meet this demand. So on the theoretical side, I think it might be useful to, to map the quantum terminology and the concepts in quantum mechanics to something all of you are familiar with, uh, linear algebra. Uh, in the regime we are studying quantum systems, uh, everything is basically boils down to linear algebra in the end. So, so some important concepts that um, uh, for, for what I will be talking about next is uh, uh, quantum state is defined by a wave function or a state vector, which can be represented in a, in a computer as a as a complex value matrix or vector. We have Hamiltonians to define the, the energy structure of a, of a system, which, has, which in the end can be mapped to a Hermitian com complex valued, usually sparse matrix. And then we have an equation of motion that describes the evolution of uh, the system under the influence of uh, its Hamiltonian and, and possible interaction with its surrounding. And that can be mapped to ordinary differential equations. And then we have uh, observations and observables that, uh, that in the end we can calculate from taking the inner product between our operators and um, state vectors or wave functions. So, so that's the, is a small review and background of this field. So, so what we want to do in Qtip is to have a framework to to um, uh, handle and simulate this kind of system. So to do this, we need a, need a representation of quantum objects and um, being able to, to op uh, calculate with these objects and evolve them in time and so forth. So to do this, we have um, implemented a Q-object class, which uh, encapsulates all the, all the information that you need to keep about the quantum state. For example, it's underlying data structures, what kind of uh, object it is, if it's a state or an operator, and uh, what its dimension and what's its shape is, if it's a composite system of couples, coupled uh, components, for example. So in the Q-object class, we, we bake in all these different aspects and represent it in one uh, coherent uh, manner. and. Uh, we implemented a number of functions to do common operations on, on these uh, uh, objects. For example, like the dagger or taking the norm or everything that you would typically want to do with the quantum systems. So we also have a large library of built-in states and operators. For example, to the left down here, you can see uh, the sigma x function that uh, returns a Q object uh, in uh, representation of the <coughs> Pauli sigma, sigma x operator. And um, it, if you print, out, print it out in the command, you can get a summary of, of the different fields in this class. 
And uh, we use the same class to represent state vectors, which is shown here to the right. For example, generating a coherent state, we can um, use the coherent function, and it, it generates a, a different uh, qubit instance representing that state. Um, and with this uh, functionality, we can already do a lot of things. We can, for example, com um, uh, compose different, uh, different Hamiltonians and set up new, new physical problems easily using the, the, um, the arithmetic operators to combine operators into new operators. And we can, uh, and we can create superpositions of basis states. And um, in the middle column, you can see how we can use the tensor, tensor function and the p-trace functions to, to take operators and, and tensor them together and create a larger uh, state space of coupled, coupled systems. And the p-trace function is the partial trace that, that does the reverse function. We also have functions for calculating eigenstates and the, doing basis transformations for these operators. And, and together, these, uh, these functions and, mem and, uh, uh, and, and mem functions in the cube class gives us a framework for working with quantum um, systems like Hamiltonians and, and state vectors. And with that, we can already do some small calculations. For example, the graph up here to the right shows uh, the um, occupation uh, probability of an uh, atom coupled to a cavity in its, uh, in its ground state in the ultra-strong coupling regime, which has been an active topic of research in the last few years. Um, and on top of this, uh, the qubit class and this basic infrastructure, we have a large number of uh, modules and, and functions that do, that do um, for example, calculating time evolutions of states and, and operators, and we have a large number of functions to generate common predefined states and operators. And um, we have a large number of functions for visualizations and, and all kinds of other uh, utility functions. So there is a whole lot of stuff in there. And, uh, this show you some, some graphical representation of um, what's in there. So the main use of Qtip is to do time evolution of, of this kind of quantum systems. And um, for that, there is a large number of uh, evolution solvers. And a typical Qtip calculation would, would consist of these steps here to the left. You will set up some parameters, define operators and states that, that uh, defines the problem. and we would uh, choose a solver suitable for the, for the situation cons under consideration and evolve the system and then do some po post-processing and uh, visualization or things like that. And for the solvers, we have um, unitary solvers for the Schrodinger equation and the Neumann equation. There's a Lindblad master equation and a Monte Carlo quantum trajectory evolution and block redfield and Fluke-Markov equations to mention a few. So a typical uh, quantum mechanical problem. So let's consider a textbook example of an atom coupled to a cavity. This is the James Conning model, and it's the simplest uh, quantum mechanical system for considering the interaction between light and matter. So imagine there is an atom, single atom, sitting inside two cavity, in, in a cavity defined by two mirrors. And uh, the Hamiltonian for this system is written down here. And uh, there is an initial state for where the the cavity mode has one excitation, and the atom is in its ground state. And then the evolution yeah, uh, obeys the Schrodinger equation. And in the end, we might be interested in something like the uh, occupation probability of the cavity, which is this, this A dagger A operator. So this is the mathematical formulation for this problem. And the Q-tip code to simulate it is in this gray box here. So first thing we would do is to set up some operator that defines the the operators in, our, in our, our Hamiltonian, select some parameters, and we write the Hamiltonian in a, in a way that's very similar to how it's written in the mathematical formulation. One of our goals is to have a framework that is very easy to program and that has a close correspondence with its mathematical formulation. And then next step would be to define a list of times and then evolve the, the initial state. 
can calculate expectation values. And, and this plot down here shows how, how, the, uh, how the occupation initially put in the cavity is being periodically absorbed by the atom. This is uh, an example of the quantum vacuum rebus solutions. So for a slightly more complicated problem, here we have a Hamiltonian of a single two-level atom. And uh, in this case, the Hamiltonian is time dependent. So we have to approach this problem slightly differently. In Q-tip, we use uh, uh, a, list, a nested list format for defining time dependent operators, uh, shown here in this segment here, in the middle of this box. And apart from that, there is uh, not, not much difference from the previous example. We just define our time dependent Hamiltonian and do go through the same steps. Um, and the dynamics of this, this two-level system is shown in these two figures here. The top shows the block, uh, the block sphere representation of the trajectory, and, and uh, at the bottom there is the, in the background, it shows the occupation probability of the ground and excited state, and, and these lines here shows the energy splitting. Uh, another example is to study um, couple two, two couple uh, two level systems, two qubits, and um, in, a, in, uh, in quantum computation, we, it's common that we want to apply gates to the to register of qubits. And this is a simple two, two qubit gate. It's called the I-swap gate, which uh, is, uh, can be realized by turning on this interaction Hamiltonian for some period of time, T. So um, a new thing in this example is that we include the uh, in, uh, effects of the environment of the system, quantum system into the dynamics, and we can define the effect of the environment by adding colla collapse operators, like shown in the middle of this gray box. So, so that's the method for defining interaction with the environment that we use in Q-tip. It's a very compact way of defining uh, interaction so with the surrounding. And then we use the propagator function to, to calculate the propagator of, of, for this gate. And the result is shown to the right here. The top, plus, top plot shows the ideal gate, and below it you can see how the interaction with the environment um, it deteriorates the gate quality. Um, that's a slightly more complicated example, just to show that uh, even as um, add some more complexity to the, to the models. It's, it, the Q-tip code for programming is, is uh, quite compact and, and it's easy to define more complicated systems. Here is a system of 21 coupled um, uh, spin one half particles in, in a chain with nearest neighbor interaction. And um, it's a, behind the scenes here, it's a very large quantum system with over, over two million uh, basis states. So this takes uh, about seven hours to simulate with, with our toolbox. But uh, even if it's a complicated system, it's quite easy to program it in Qtip. Uh, I will not talk much about visualization, but I would like to just emphasize that it's an important part of quantum mechanics and also in, in Qtip. We want to visualize quantum states and processes in ways that emphasize uh, various aspects. So I just want to say that we have it in there. And, um, okay, so to wrap up, I would just like to say a few words about how we implement Q-tip. So we use um, NumPy and SciPy, mostly SciPy, and we heavily rely on the sparse matrix library and the ODE solver, primarily. Um, the, for visualization, we use matplotlib, and uh, we also have found it very useful to optimize parts, select parts of Q-tip using Cyton and I've seen great speed ups with that approach. So, and we also use the multi-processing package to parallelize um, large parts of Q-tip, which is, uh, can be parallelized easily and provide a simple par for loop construct to, to support e parallelization of user programs. And um, our most uh, efficient use of Cyton has been to replace the right hand side, right -hand side function of the, for the um, SciPy OD solver. It has given, given speed ups of a factor of 10 or more. And um, it's been very simple to do. 
Um, one problem with this is that uh, our ODE equations are generated dynamically by our framework and, uh, um, and, and for time dependent problems it's been impossible to uh, implement a static cyclone function that describes that situation. So to solve that problem we have developed a simple code generator that on the fly generates a cyclone function that uh, implements the right, uh, right hand side function for for our OD problem and then write this down to disk and compiles it and loads it up in the in, in, in the Python and uh, applies it to the OD solver. This has been a very useful uh, approach for us and if you're using time dependent or even time independent OD problems and uh, that takes a lot of time to simulate, I really recommend checking out if, if Cyton might uh, be a good way of speeding up that process. Okay, to um, so wrap up, I've been talking about uh, some of the capabilities of our uh, Qtip framework. And um, if you're interested in more information, please check out our webpage. There's a lot of documentation, and uh, you can download the code and try it out yourself. And um, uh, one of so just to reiterate, our main focus with Qtip is to provide a generic framework for for collaborative research in. Uh, in quantum dynamics, and uh, uh, we have some future plans to add more uh, evolution solvers and perhaps optimize uh, certain aspects of it using OpenCL. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Anyway, questions on the mic. Uh, have you done any work on using this to, for uh, the predictive modeling of establishing and detecting entangled systems at a distance? Uh, yes, we have, uh, in our framework we have a number of functions for uh, calculating the entanglement. There's a lot of different measures of entanglement, but we have implemented a few of them and it can, can be applied to, to uh, to uh, quantum system, like two level systems coupled to each other and uh, and we have done some work on that and we can um, for example evaluate Bell's inequality uh, and, and things like that. Question. Um, I was I was surprised. It, it's a beautiful project. I wish I'd had this in grad school. Uh, but it, um, I was surprised that you didn't mention SymPy um, at all. The, so I'm curious. Did, did you implement effectively your own symbolic processing machinery internally, or because if not, I, I I'm having a hard time understanding how you recognize things like Lie algebras for commutators and things like that. If I compute the commutator of sigma x and y, will it recognize that it's sigma z but times i, or am I just going to get a matrix out? When it doesn't know what the underlying algebraic structure is. Uh, yeah, we don't uh, use any symbolic uh, pr um, calculations at all, and um, the uh, commutators are uh, sat satisfied automatically by the matrix algebra, basically. But we don't do any rec automatic recognition that uh, the commutators are, um, is of sigma x and sigma y is sigma z or anything like that. But numerically, it's all taken care of by the by the um, the, the uh, matrix algebra, basically. All right, let's thank our speaker again.